All right, let's see what I got. I got me some hard drives today. Got them from Go Hard Drive. I actually got them from eBay. Let's take a look. Let's see what we got. So looks like it's uh, the HG STs, eight terabytes. Um, got a good deal on it. I think I paid a little extra for the ones with zero uh, bad sectors on them. I think I paid about what seventy-five dollars a piece or something like that for them. Uh, go hard drive on eBay, and um, the shipping was pretty fast. I think I got them in about two or three days, something like that. So we're gonna test them out and see what we got. Okay, so I got me these caddies for my D2600 HP disc enclosure. It's like a HP Gen 7 style 3.5 inch caddy. That's what they look like. So we're going to put the drives on these. You want to install the hard drives in it. And I like to write the serial number on the front cover of it. Because then you can identify it real easy. If it fails, you know exactly which drive it is. So you can pull it out and handle your business. All right. Find us some more screws here somewhere. There's some. Well. Better not throw the bags away yet just in case I got one that's DOA or something. I have faith in them though. Because last ones that I got, they run fine. They had a, they had a smart attribute on them. They were saying that they were ran for so many hours. They were over the hours of runtime or something like that. But they still functioned fine. I mean, there was no smart errors and nothing like that on them. Uh, it just had that smart error on it. Which, I'm going to be honest with you, I mean, I ain't running in an enterprise environment or nothing. I don't care less about that. As long as it ain't got a bunch of bad sectors on it and it's going bad. That's what I don't want. Yeah, we don't want bad sectors. We don't want to. We don't want to copy all of our data storage over to it, and then it crashes and burns. That always seems to happen, right? <laughs> Testing them out, like, oh, everything's working good, and then you copy all your files over, and you let it run for a while, and you're like, well, shoot, I got this other storage that they were located on. I think it's good enough. And then you go and you take that storage offline and you decommission it and next thing you know your shit crashes. Nah, I'm just kidding. That ain't, that won't happen, hopefully. I got my professional label maker right here. Just went to Dollar General and got me some labels. Uh, like I said, Dollar General. You should have one within walking distance of where you live, pretty much. Because uh, they put them everywhere. So... Just go to Dollar General, pick you up some of these labels, and then I got me a pencil. You can also buy these at Dollar General, and uh, we're gonna write the serial number on these labels, and we're gonna stick them on the front. And here's my pair of scissors. You can also buy them from Dollar General as well. Looks good, looks good. Here's my enclosure that I'm gonna put them in. As you can see, I got uh, three, ter three, four terabytes and two eight terabytes in it already. And as you can see, I actually put the size on the drive. I might do that, I'll write that on mine as well. So I'm gonna start installing the hard drives here. Stick them in. Be a little careful with them, you know. Make 
you know this is hot swappable and all that stuff so we ain't got to worry about shutting anything down as long as we don't crash and burn or something for some unknown reason and boom so there they are installed now let's see what we're going to do Alright, what we're going to do is we're going to run this command. And we're going to see what we see. Okay, it looks like one, two, three, four right here. Looks like U, V, W, and X. So currently we have the other two drives in this mirror right here what I'm gonna do is I'm actually do away with that mirror all right let's see here we got our mirror here which is right here we got anything on here it doesn't look like we have anything on it so we're gonna just blow this away let's see here We'll actually go to data center here, go to storage, mirror one. Okay, we can go ahead and remove that. All right, there it goes. Okay, so it's removed from here. And here, I'm going to drag, drag this back over, this SSH. What we're going to do is we're going to... Um, we'll actually destroy this. And I'm wondering if we can do this through... through the GUI interface here. Yeah. So click on this. And we're going to actually. I don't think we are able to. Oh, right here. More. I'm going to destroy. Once we did that, now let's run the command again. Z. Full status. Yep, I don't see it anymore. Maybe I can do Z pull list. Yep, the only thing that we got left is the tank 101, tank 102, Z1, I should say, tank Z1. O2. So actually we're going to, let's create a tank Z103 is what we're going to call the next one. Now we know it's going to be a 7.28, right? Yeah, let's grab that. Let's see how many we got. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's correct. We got six in all. And this Q and R. Oh, there they are right there. Oh, wow. It blew the file system away and everything. So we really don't even have to do 
We don't have to wipe the FS off of it, it don't look like. Don't look like we have to wipe it. So, what we're going to do is... always get my notes out right here And then we're going to basically copy all these disk IDs out right here. It's because this is what you want to use when you're making your ZFS. Uh, you don't want to do it by the, the device because apparently the device can actually change. But this is an ID that's given to it that won't change every time. So this is what you want to do when you're creating your Z pool. Got them all listed in just one line so these all these drives here are the IDs of those drives right here so I just put I just copied and pasted it and just put one space in between them see right there you can see the space okay and we're doing that because it's just in case this utility for some reason the Proxmox version that I'm running, uh, it doesn't show some of the disks sometimes when you like try to create a ZFS. Matter of fact, let's try it. I'm gonna just try it with the web UI here. We call it Tank Z One Zero Three. And what we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's actually showing all of them. Now, um. I'm actually going to create uh, two RAID Z1s. I'm going to create it with three drives. So actually, I'll just come over here. One, two, three. That's. I'm going to choose RAID Z. Compression on. That's fine. All right, and then we hit create. I leave this A shift twelve. I know they get into it. You know, it's apparently you can change them numbers around, and you can get less wasted storage or whatever. I don't know. I'm just leave it at default. Uh, one, two, three. I'm gonna create. Little storage now. We're going to go ahead and we're going to, I'm going to do Z pool status. So I can show you. And we have this pool right here, the Tank Z103. And there are the three hard drives. And we got it running in a RAID Z1. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to add the other three to this. And that's the reason why I kind of map all this out. Um, because I don't know exactly if you can add the disk in. Proxmox, so I'd kind of do it on the back end. And what we're going to do is we're going, we're going. Uh, this is the command you use right here. Of course, you know we're not going to show you. Just paste this, and of course we're going to add it to 103. Okay, and then the end. You definitely want the end because the end actually shows. You know, it kind of runs a test. To make sure it's like, what is this? What you want to do? Copy and you'll see. I'm gonna just copy that. I'm gonna just paste it in the SSH here. And actually, I can just, I just go up on it. Just come back here on the. All right. Okay, so now uh, I told it to RAID Z. I uh, sorry. I did. Okay, so now it's basically showing what the command would do, and it's saying it would update to the following configuration, which is basically you're adding a 
<clears throat> another extent on to it, I guess. I don't know exactly what you call it, but this is where you extend it, the uh, ZFS pool. And so um, I'm going to just basically run the same command. So I'm going to just up arrow on it. I'm going to go um, home on there. I'm gonna, and then I'm going to come here. I'm going to take that in out. And I'm going to hit enter. Then we wait a minute. Okay. And then we're going to Z pool list. Dang, 43 terabytes online. Okay. If we just say. So there are. So we basically have two RAID Z1s. And I know you're asking why I'm doing this. I don't really have an answer. It's just because I wanted to, I guess. I don't know. And the reason why, I wanted to show you something else. Like, okay, so my other storage. Um, okay, okay, so that's um, my Western Digital drives, my four terabytes, I believe. Let's see what's... Yeah, seven point right there. Okay, so I got one Z one C technically I could have ran that command from there and of course I could have extended this out if I wanted to and not had to do anything. But see I don't want to do that. I kinda just wanna test these drives out first, maybe you know, mount them in one of my LXC containers or something and test them out, copy some stuff to them, or, you know, whatever I have to do. So, we'll see. Okay. So, basically, I'm going to move this uh, VM's hard disk, and uh, we'll see, or disk, I should say. So I'm going to say move storage, and then we're going to move it to the Tank Z103. Hit move disk. We're going to pull this over here. Pull the net data up here, and then watch it. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna start the chrono gra graph as well. So, whoops. Got the chronograph running. Looking here. It reads. All right. Looks like it's almost finished. It's at 100 percent. I think it's done. Okay, it's done. So about two minutes to stop. About two minutes to do 32 gig. Five, six. About five to seven, it looks like. 500 to 700 megasecond, it looks like.